Sean. What up? How are you? How are you doing? Good to see you. You, I uh, see you have friends. Hi. Uh, this is my. Uh, hey, Chiked. How are you? I'm Chiked, the main producer of Golf Mile. Oh my God! We were yeah. emailing today. Oh my God! I have both of you. Yeah. Well, I told him I was going to talk to you, and we usually hang out and lift weights anyway, so he said to come by. So. Yeah. That's awesome! Yeah. Wow. So, so okay, so cool. So I could have questions for both of you then. Yep. All the better. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. So my first question. Um, really both of you could answer this is how did you get involved you know with this because I realize it's not just a movie it's um it's a cause also yeah um <laughs> it really started because I was selling a, another dolphin movie that was shot in Grand Bahama uh -huh. and um in late in late 2019 there was the the hurricane Dorian and we've been in touch with the local people, uh, with local government, seeing how we can you can do anything to help. And they said that there is enough people like trying to donate, but really the best thing to do is to come and shoot another movie and stimulate the economy. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, well, uh, to hire as many people there, both in front and behind the camera, it it end up. Um, a little bit problematic because they really don't have any experience and they don't have any equipment. Oh, oh. Uh, so kind of brought Sean into the game, but um, the director, Mike Disa and I, we went down there um, in December. I came up with a story and then went down there and looked at location and just finished the script based on locations. And we did a day of casting, seeing the cast, the, the people we can get around there and try to write characters around what we see because you know obviously it's not professional actors so we kind of had to write something that fits to who they yeah. are as opposed to try to have them act as somebody they're not um okay. and yeah and by january we were shooting uh, unfortunately um as you know we, we finished shooting in february in march there was the pandemic yeah. and they got hit again the second time because their whole economy is based on tourism so you know the cruise line just stopped immediately and and really for a lot of people we were the only business they had in that year wow oh yeah because so you literally you were in post-production during the pandemic yes i mean kind of worked fine for us because you guys yes, yes. <laughs> john was um uh, we'll jump in in a second John, uh, Sean was the director of photography for the other film, uh, which I didn't produce. I was just selling it for the producers. Uh, it's called Dolphin Kick, but I don't know how much you want to talk about or mention the name, you know, but oh, sure. Um, but uh, because, you know, we're both kind of not really involved with that project at this point. Oh, uh, oh, OK. Uh, that was yeah. not that was not for either of you, the, the Dolphin Kick. Uh, well, Sean, uh, Sean was the DP. Yeah, a DP. Oh, I mean, so interesting because, you know, I think so often we deal with movies where the script is the beginning, right? And so for you, it's like, so if this is really novel, you started with the location and then, okay, who do I have available? Let's build it around these people. So can you talk a little bit about the the people that you found because like was a hundred percent of the cast local then no uh definitely not we had after doing the casting um we figure we're gonna need the base of the main characters uh, uh -huh. to get stag actors you know working stag actors so uh peter woodrow uh besides being a friend of the director i also worked with him on a sci-fi movie called um Oh dear, I produced a movie that I forgot the name. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, I produced like 46 or 48 movies by now. Um, Crazy. The Last Scout. It's called The Last Scout. So okay. Peter Peter was one of the main characters, I'm sorry, in a movie called The Last Scout. Uh, so I knew his work and then my director worked with him before. I worked as a director uh, on a previous uh, animation movie. Originally, Mike Lisa does a lot of animation. So we worked in Space Dogs. Uh, together, so it was kind of you know bringing together people we all know um, to put together. Uh, Bob Bledsoe uh, also we worked together on Space Dogs, and he was in my movie Biggest Spider. So you know we tried to bring a core group that know what they're doing, you know, in terms of professionally, 
uh, because it was also important to bring the, the head of departments, uh, people that have experience like Sean, and then they could add interns or you know people locally that sure. can help out, but but not as the key the key staff. And and the and the young actress um, who is is well the co lead is she, she also was from elsewhere, right? Yeah, she's from from Texas. Yeah, she was in the in the Dolphin movie, so she was uh, familiar with the area and. and the people over there. And that was actually the, my third film I've worked with her. She's uh I, first film was 2014. She was like eight or something. Wow. And then 2016 or 17. And she was like wow. 10 or 11. And then this one in 2019, 2020? 20, 2020 at the beginning of 2020. She was 13 or 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, yeah. I don't know. But then, I've watched her grow up throughout from a little girl to a very big girl. Yeah, Sean Watcher grew up um, through the lens of the camera, but yeah. uh, uh, Matteo, the the uh, boy, was the local hire. Mm -hmm. um, oh. he was, yeah, he did great. Yeah, he did great. There was um, a, a woman. Um, her name is Paulette. I'm sorry, it's like when it gets to this, mm -hmm. you know, six o'clock, my brain shut off. Um, I I can send you her last name. She's actually in a press kit I sent you, but. Paulette um, was running a theater group that the entire building, I mean, they just destroyed in the hurricane. It just oh, doesn't wow. exist anymore. Yeah. And she really helped us bring the local cast. Um, and we gave her a casting director credit. Um, and I think it was a first, first casting director credit, but oh, wow. she really helped us bring people uh, from schools, from um, you know local theater groups and local school uh, drama programs. That's really cool. It's actually in the movie too. Uh, it's the big guy that kind of drinking in the back, you know. That's that's his. Oh, oh, the the um, he's like the uh, the attorney, the, the whatever the word is for an attorney, right? The barrister. No, that was Bob Bledsoe. He came from. from oh, like, oh, okay. oh. Yeah. Yeah. Barrister. Barrister. Yeah. yeah. Barrister. Yes. Um. So and also the the movie is go under honey. The movie is um like part of the proceeds are going to that reserve, right? Somehow or yeah. So everybody on the crew are basically we, we adopted um a similar residual uh, base that works with um SAG actors. So everybody's getting points based on how many days they worked on the film as a part of the overall um, working days, right? So all the local crew, every, everybody who works in the movie have a little piece of the film. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Almost like a co-op. Almost like a co-op, yeah. Wow. Now we just to make the movie a success. So, you know, so <laughs> so they're actually going to get a few dollars and cents from, from their percentage. Right, right. Yeah, and in terms of, um, so what is the, the plan for distribution for the movie? So we released it uh, two weeks ago on VOD uh, in the US, um, and it's coming out um, tomorrow in Canada um, right. on, on all major uh, VOD platforms. So oh, okay. Amazon, iTunes, wow. yeah. Nice. Uh, iTunes, Amazon, DirecTV, Spectrum, you know, it's available to buy uh, or to rent um on those platforms right now oh that's great and then uh, in terms of um are you planning to take it also to europe or do they already have access through the the same mediums that we have um in here in in the rest of the world we have uh uh we have a tv deal that's going to be on tv in many of the countries like france and italy whatever germany so oh, cool. uh, we did that before we shot the movie to uh, basically to, to get finance Mm -hmm. So uh, that that was an early deal. I have an advantage because I've been a sales agent and I sold maybe 200 movies. Oh, so wow. um, I usually finance, try to finance the films with um, pre-selling it, you know, pre-selling some of the rights. Ah, that's great. That's great. Um, I have, you know, it's interesting. Um, I have some questions, Sean, for you as a cinematographer. It was so, first of all, um, how did you get your gear there? Or did you rent gear? Is there gear to rent? No, it's that's actually probably the hardest part of the whole process of getting uh, the stuff to the Bahamas is the ways of getting there are very limited. You have to uh, ship it all on an airplane to Miami oh, wow. and then get it on a boat to go through customs into their country. And the boat 
uh, it's cumbersome. They need detailed manifests. They need every little part number. And it's like a huge pain in the ass. And they're very strict about what you're bringing into their country and like what, how many lenses and what cameras and this and that. Wow. And then once it's finally there, then it's relatively easy. We can, we can shoot freely, but it's a very, I mean, the Bahamas is very underdeveloped, I would say, is in terms of film production is there's no like uh, Sinhalese or somewhere you can go and rent like a production truck or, oh. or we don't have any lights. So we can go down the street and, rent 400 more lights or whatever it's we i think we started the show with like maybe 10 or 12 lights i think by the end of the show we had like maybe six or seven lights because they oh, kept wow. getting broken oh, and God. it was like getting scary because we're like if we keep breaking equipment guys we're we're, we're out of luck we're we're on another country four thousand miles away and we can't just like send somebody down to hollywood to pick something up you guys like we gotta finish this film um so there's a lot of things that you take for granted when you work in LA or in the area you just oh I forgot something I'll just run down the street and grab right. it or I'll remember to Best Buy they don't have anything like that they have like wow. one Burger King and I think they have only one Burger King in the whole island the whole island it. yeah um everything's just remember, about resorts and tours in there there's yeah. no real film production uh to speak of except for people who come in bring all their stuff and leave well, it seems like a huge advantage that you filmed there before, because that way you could maybe anticipate a little bit of what you were going to need extras of or navigating the water even. Yeah, um, it was funny because the first time I was there, um, I, I I don't know if I told you or Jeff way back in the day, but I'm, I'm a surfer from the time I was born, but uh, yeah. I love like the element of danger and being on the water. And there's like some BTS footage of me holding on to like... Uh, piece of the boat and hanging off the side of the boat <laughs> filming a shot and there's like a dolphin doing a flip and another boat is about to ram our boat and there's it's like nobody spotting me there's no not even a first ac my first ac was in the other boat like all these things that are very dangerous you know because if yes. anything would happen if i drop the camera in the water the movie shoots over but um i'm very lucky and i'm very uh <laughs> sure-footed and competent like i want to my camera, because it's my dad's and he gave it to me, is like my livelihood. So I treat I treat it like a piece of my body. I'm not going to ever damage it, you know, yeah. not really. So uh, it's become an appendage of mine and it works really well in the Bahamas because um, I'm in my element. You know, I'm on the water, I'm in the ocean. Cool. I mean, I'm in the water sometimes with the dolphin. I was uh, wondering about that. I was wondering if you first of all were some shots done from the water and secondly did you have to use a special like water camera or did you just use the same camera yeah she sure had actually uh <laughs> paid for me to get scuba certified out in uh miami or fort lauderdale before we left on uh to the to the bahamas but uh yeah uh we had a water camera and um, some of the stuff was shot by my second AC who he owned the water camera and it was kind of his apparatus. So, um, yeah, whether it be like a GoPro that's waterproof or a bigger camera in a bag that we used for this one, uh, the wa getting underwater in the crystal clear waters and getting the dolphin swimming is like a huge part of the storytelling that like you can't um, fake, you know what I mean? If you see a CG dolphin, it just kind of ruins the effect. Oh yeah, completely. W was it um, at all challenging? Like, is is Mitzi a, a very well trained dolphin, or was it, did, or did so was it's actually probably like four or five dolphins because oh, wow. they have about twenty dolphins. And the trainer is this guy named Roscoe who t trains the dolphins night and day, treats them very very well. It's the only place, one of the only places in the world where you can take a dolphin into open water. And oh. a dolphin, like a dog, will just swim beside the boat and it'll do flips, it'll do underwater tricks, it'll collect stuff and bring it to the boat. And when the dolphin gets tired, it swims back to uh, the dolphin center where it goes back into its little, it's not little, it's actually a huge giant swimming pool, but a uh, place where it stays. Yeah, they're, they're open water dolphin. Unlike, you know, Sea World or they don't live in tanks, they live in the open water in a sanctuary. Yeah. They're not in caps. Yeah, and they, they come back because they get fed over there and they get treated, you know. Um, but it's pretty amazing because they're almost like dogs. Like you walk by and they come to say hi to you yeah. and they throw Very rocks at you. 
they throw rocks at you because they want to play chess, right? Oh so gosh. it's really like, oh, it's, it's pretty amazing. They're so intelligent. That's, that's very cool that that they're, I mean, you know, because some people might wonder like, oh, are they being treated well? But it's like, oh no, they're there voluntarily then. They're just yeah. happy to be. They treat them so good in terms yeah. of like, I mean, they're, they're their parents, you know, the same way that some dog owners kind of, you know, baby their dogs and keep yeah. them like, like human beings. Like that's the way the, the they run their, their center over there. So do you, um like when you're filming with them, are they able to give them sort of commands then? They're trained kind of like a dog would do tricks. They can. Yeah. It's basically the trainers work with them and they have whistles and different hand gestures and the dolphin can learn I mean, an obscene amount more than any dog or any animal. They're just brilliant. Um, so they can know how to do a flip. They can know how to do a somersault, a spin. They can speak. They can nod. They can shake their head. Um, so it's actually fantastic because for a storytelling perspective, a lot of times the actor is acting with the dolphin. Right. And it looks like the dolphin is really conversating with this person because the dolphin's shaking his head no. And it's like, well, where is he? And the dolphin's like, jumps and tells you where to go so right. there, from a storytelling perspective it works fantastic because these animals are some of the smartest animals i've ever worked with in my life and they're really like the movie stars of the of the film um when it comes down to it you know? yeah yeah i mean it's so it's so special i was thinking even like well i watched it with my oldest and my little ones well, they're not that little, they're like 10 and 11, but I want, I was thinking, I want to show it to them also and get their perspective. Cause I know when I was little and I would see stuff like that, I just wanted to be in the water. I was like, I want to, I want to ride the dolphin. And yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really special that you guys were able to include that and then build around it, the story. Mm -hmm. Well, I think especially these days when families cannot go anywhere for spring yeah. break. Uh, it's great to uh, take like a film vacation, you know, like a movie vacation to to a different place. And, you know, what's better than going on spring break to like a tropical island, right? Yeah, and maybe it will hopefully inspire people to want to visit, right? And then bring more tourism there. Are you guys thinking about doing more movies there? Hopefully. I mean, one, one reviewer said that the movie really works as a pilot for a TV <laughs> series. You know, that's an idea. Oh, um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's different stories to tell. Uh -huh. um, um, yeah, I would definitely like to go back there again. I'm just thinking maybe to make shark movie because the water is so clear. But um, the people there and the, the island make it worth it. You know what I mean? If I was to go on this type of project and do it in uh, Marina del Rey or something, it just wouldn't have the magic. You know what I mean? Because it just, the, the, the people on the island and the locals and the way that the resorts are set up and the people on the sanctuaries and the water, all of it makes a very, it's a location vacation. You know what I mean? Yeah. You work very hard, but you're in paradise. And so it makes it really, really rewarding when it's all done. Yeah. And it's just beautiful. Like, you know, you couldn't even paint it more beautiful, the water, you know, the way it's, um, it's so clear. I thought it was amazing. You know, I think you might have done a drone shot where you went around the boat yeah. um, in the beginning and you could just see it. It almost looked like the, the boat was like floating in air because the water was so clear. Yeah. And it's so warm. Um, oh, the actor was actually um, getting kind of peeved with me by the end because I kept getting in the water and we'd lose <laughs> time because I just couldn't resist. Like I, any offer, any, excuse to get in I right, would get, right, right. get it because uh it's just it's like a bath and it's crystal clear and it's 12 feet deep and you're swimming with dolphins and wow. beautiful food. what about are there sharks did you guys have to worry about that while you were filming there's only sharks on one side of the island and it was um there's this little restaurant that we had our wrap dinner at yeah. and I remember it's part of the mystique of the restaurant that they get these buckets full of fish and everybody comes up to the railing you know imagine a restaurant on like in santa barbara on the harbor or something and the, you know it's right over the ocean and they throw the fish in and these okay. sharks come right up to the rocks yeah, you and the you feed the sharks and they literally swim up so only on one side of the <laughs> island and i think they come there every night strictly because they know at this point that's where they can get the good oh my goodness maybe that's 
like a defensive thing. Um, you know, like, I don't know if this is something they've been doing for, I don't know, generations, but it seems kind of smart. It's like, let's draw all of the sharks over here so then we could swim over there or just. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is that the best defense for the sharks is the dolphins because the oh. dolphins have the sonar and they know the sharks from miles away. So in general, when, you know, you're shooting and there's dolphins around you and then when they, you see them leaving, uh, you know, okay, maybe a shark is coming. <laughs> oh, did that happen? And no, it didn't happen, but that's what uh -huh. the trainer said. They said, yeah. if, you, if you see the, shark, the dolphin suddenly leave, get the people out of the water. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. It's funny, the only time I've seen the dolphin leave is on the first time around. The dolphin uh, would get exhausted after doing, you know, a bunch of flips and tricks. And it would, like, go back to its trailer, like a movie star, where it's like, <laughs> I'm done shooting. I don't care. And they'd be, like, trying to summon it back to the boat to do more shots. And it's like, screw you guys. I'm going back. <laughs> well, they leave They leave when they're um, when they're full. Because, you know, you do the tricks with the fish, right? You can do the right. nose. But, you know. They eat and then when they're full, they're like, "All right, you know, I'm full. I'm going back." Yeah, they're definitely uh, not divas. They just, yeah, they know when they've got it in the can. Yeah, that is funny. Um, trying to think too. Uh, if there are any other burning questions, it's so interesting. I had no idea about the genesis of the movie, and that's so cool. So it's very unexpected. Um, what? Anything else that you guys? Oh, wait, I do have another question about the camera work. So in the very opening scene, I noticed a shift and I wondered if it was intentional because there's a, the scene where the grandpa and the granddaughter are side by side talking and you feel like there's a lot of up and down. I don't know if, if it's because, you know, we're like, a I don't know. And then we shift to where she's on the end of the boat and it's more stable. And I thought, I wonder if that was, simply by nature of how the camera was attached or positioned or whatever, or if it, or if it was intentional and you wanted us to feel a certain something there. I mean, I wish I could say that it had a deeper meaning and from a, at least my perspective, but I think a lot of the, the, the struggle in shooting on open water is that we're quite literally in the elements. Right. Sometimes the boat, is getting hit by a lot of wind in the morning and then sometimes it cools off the afternoon. And so it quite literally could have just been that we were getting hit by some weather and then for that particular shot or scene, it kind of cooled out a little bit. Uh, but uh, I don't remember a significant reason on why I would do that in a romantic way or, or however right. creatively uh -huh. I would have been inspired to do that. I think it was just... <laughs> Yeah, Partial. but if you want to make Sean um, sound genius, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it had deep yeah. symbolic, symbolic meaning, the mizzen sin. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but it was a blast, and I really enjoy making movies with my friends, and particularly in exotic locations. There's really nothing better. Yeah, that's really it, obviously you guys are good friends. You're working out together today, and it just so happens that you're together right now. Yeah, Shaked and I are good friends IRL, not just the uh, yeah the clubhouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool, you guys. I think that's I think that's awesome. You know, I can't believe how many movies did you say you made forty eight movies? Forty seven or forty six? Oh my uh, god! But you're you're funny. like extremely young to have made even like a couple movies. So. Uh well, you know, I think you're appreciated. I'm, I'm not as young as, as you think. It's the mask. It's masking the age. He's an but, old soul. But yeah, he's but, I believe um, that. It's, um, it's really a, a matter of staying focused and also just deciding that you make a movie. I think a lot of people, um, a lot of people in our industry, if you want to go into it, they're, they say that they want to make movies, but they're not really. They want to make their specific movie, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you find people that like for 10 years, they keep running around with the same script and still trying to push it, even though you told them no for 15 times, right? Right, right. There's people that it's a career for them, right? It's a job. It's, it's yeah. you know, how you pay the bills. It's how, you know, you buy your, your groceries and you pay the mortgage. So you have to, you know, we have to shoot three movies this year. You know, you have to make it happen. You know, yeah. you do anything to make it happen. So uh, I think it's just a, a bit of a different mentality of, of people. I had a very uh, uh, quick school because I started as a personal assistant 
for uh, for a big producer. So I saw both things on set and in the business side and, and got into it really quickly. Oh, yeah. Who, who did you work with or who did you come up with? Oh, his name is Stephen Paul. Uh, when I started working with him, we, we made um, a movie called uh, Ghost Rider with Nicolas Cage, uh, which was really one of the first, like, you know, big tentpole kind of um, comic book um, movies because I think the Superman movies before that were uh, much lower budget than what um, they were made. But Sony uh, really spent money on that one, and then mm-hmm. and then of course the budget just <laughs> kept rising and rising, you know. But right. uh, if I'm mistaken, it probably was the first like over one hundred million dollar, you know, type of tentpole, wasn't it? I think so. I mean, what year? Yeah. Two thousand three. Uh, yeah. Something like that, yeah. Oh wow. I remember that movie. Yeah, that that's a that's a great crash course. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we had I had a lot of crash courses. <laughs> but, and then uh, Shaka, did you so wait, you produced it? Did you also direct on this? No, I uh, co-wrote it because I, I wrote the story and chords. Ah, uh, co-wrote and produced, okay. Yet, you know, maybe in the future. Well if, well all also- of agree to shoot it. You know, I'll direct. I think I'm going to direct the next one. I'm making. But that's what I was thinking is because Sean, you because you, you direct. You're a cinematographer, but you also direct, right? Yeah, I, I'm. I like everything behind the camera, from writing, directing, cinematography, anything that I feel like I can have um, my creative input is where I want to be because I found working in this business since I was very very young with my dad that if I have a job where my job is to just execute, um, you know, as like a grunt and move stuff and do what you're told and all that yeah. stuff, I get very, very bored very easily. And it's just too long of hours. It's like mm-hmm. 14 hours an hour a day sometimes. So the only way to keep me engaged and in love with what I'm doing is to have, uh, you know, uh, input into the creative. And so executing, even working with a director and, being able to bring the visual uh, conception to life is much more appealing to me than um, doing anything else. So yeah, writing, directing, producing, DPing, I'll, I'll do pretty much anything that gets to, uh, to make movie magic. Oh, that's cool. What, what's what's um, on your schedule next? What do you have on tap? Um, lots of stuff. Last year was started off as a fantastic year. I was working on a Disney Plus show as a cameraman, and then I went immediately into directing a movie. Uh, it was a passion project of mine in Utah, and then I got hired immediately after that to work with Shaked in the Bahamas, and then I got hired to do a million-dollar movie as a director of photography for my writing partner in New Mexico that got shut down. So since then, it's been a very long drawn out kind of you know shut down i would say or right. to stay at home and things are finally starting to open up again so there's a handful of other projects that i've been uh written or producing or DPing that i'm i'm hoping that come to pass in mid-april that's great that's right around the corner now a couple exactly. weeks away so it's a long time coming it feels like i haven't been on set in a year <laughs> I think that's probably accurate, right? Um, we could just we've we've just crested a year of lockdown. Just, just little commercials and stuff like that, just to pay the bills in between. But it, I mean, that's only fairly recently. Before that, when it was part of the shutdown, I don't think anybody was working really because it was just such a um, a liability or a hassle, mm-hmm. something that could potentially blow up in your face. If one person on the crew got COVID, um, it could be a disaster. So. Um, yeah, I'm happy that everybody's getting vaccines and we're going to be getting back to work. Yeah. You guys, I don't want to tax your time. Thank you so much for, you know, agreeing to this, like on the fly interview. The movie's being released, um, in Quebec by TVA. So I actually have a French Canadian version if you want to see it in French and a French Oh my culture. God, that would be so cool. Yeah. Because, and also the, the, um, press on this will be, um, put in both languages. I do it in English and then. Uh, Boris translates into French. Okay, yes. I can give you the trailer, the French trailer, if you want to. Yeah, that would be so awesome. The French, yeah, the French trailer and poster, so you can have 
different ones for different. Well, you guys, thank you so much. I don't want to keep you. You guys have to get to your workout, but but seriously, thank you guys. And I, what I did, I recorded it because I don't want to take notes. I want to be able to listen, and yeah. then um, we can. Um, Boris can uh maybe i'll edit it actually because i'm like i'll have to edit out our little conversation about elevate so it's about your movie so you know no, you can use it to blackmail now Sean yeah dad, so. oh. you'll know it when i start directing under a, a fake name once i've blown oh, up and hilarious out. all right for sure thank you nicole thank you guys so much hey let's be friends on the instagram or something so don't yeah, you know, for sure. you again. yeah for sure you know, let's keep keep abreast of each other's work, you know? Um, this is Thanks. fun. All right. You have a good night. Okay. And you too. Okay. Bye.